after the Oklahoma City b- the FBI has released security tapes showing the chaos that followed. They don't show the actual outside the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building. The tapes were obtained by an attorney. Now, some of the images were used as evidence at for Timothy McVeigh's trial. These intriguing stories all need one final clue, one final piece of information before they can be solved. Perhaps someone watching tonight can help. Perhaps it's you. This story is about one of law enforcement's worst nightmares. Young criminals on the road with a truck made Nothing to lose. Tim, his family had lived in central Oklahoma for four generations. According to his family, Tim loved army life and planned to re-enlist. Hardly the profile of a dangerous criminal. Poignant sight that is. Peel back a layer, though, and a quirky cast of characters emerges. It just kept falling. It was a horrible noise. Horrible noise. It sounds like I don't know. It, I didn't hear a, like a. I didn't hear a noise. It was horrible noise. It sounds like I don't know. It. I didn't hear a, like a, I didn't hear a noise. It, where I was sitting, was the only place the floor didn't cave in. I mean, right over here, the floor was gone. And... So the floor that you were sitting on didn't cave, but all around you it did? No, where I, my little area where I was sitting. But the, I was on the 7th floor, and then, of course, the 8th floor came down and went through, and then they just kept on going down. Listen. Dr. Rick Nelson spent most of yesterday in the rubble helping to locate survivors. I found myself this morning looking back at things and thinking of things that I didn't really think about during the, during the thing, and, and tears still come to my eyes. An incredibly tangled web of lies, half-truths, and innuendos. What makes this story even more disturbing, however, is where it all may lead. Uh, you know, all my friends are missing. I don't know where to come off. It's what you're... They're, they're unable to reach these people, or the ones that we have been, that they have been discovering. Excuse me. Um, we can't provide help for. I mean, they're beyond help. They're dead. Cunningly conceived and executed without remorse. I just woke up and I was covered in glass. I didn't know what was going on. I just got out. She had the desk with the office, uh, with the window. So she was right on the edge of the blast. She had the desk with the office, uh, with the window. Right on the edge of the blast. My father's appointment. <laughs> it's on the first floor. They're still missing. No one's found them. No one's seen them. Their names are not any lists. At the apex of this explosive triangle, a taxi cab came up the road. West back. So many cars back in the street. So many cars. That was unusual. Yeah, it's unusual. So many cars. Early this morning, early in the morning like that, you don't see too many cars. And a few minutes after you dropped the lady off, the explosion came. Yeah, uh-huh. You didn't see a yellow rider no, van. I didn't see anything. A routine traffic violation would be the beginning of the end for Tim. Oakland PD. Timothy McVeigh was arrested by local authorities. The suspect, Timothy McVeigh, had earlier received training in psychological operations in the Army, which involved mind-bending techniques that many have been adversely affected by. The jury heard testimony to determine his sentence. 
Today, the man who killed those people on schedule, injection, and no member of his family was in attendance. Timothy McVeigh was 33 years old and defiant to the end. Timothy McVeigh was 33 years old. The coroner agreed to no autopsy following Timothy McVeigh's execution, and it was known Timothy McVeigh's hearse was a decoy. So how do you know he's dead? Here is a photograph taken just days before his disappearance. And here is what he might look like today. Enter Special Agent Paul Weisselberg. Very little is known of his background, but he was in charge of the staged event in Florida regarding the Orlando nightclub. As we learn more details about those terrifying hours inside Pulse nightclub. Well, they said there's a lot of <laughs> at the club. <laughs> That's a crime scene. So it could be hours and hours before we find out. The hospital said that there are some at the hospital that came in and they died. And they're not identifiable yet either. And then there are a few that are conditioned that aren't identified yet. Christine, I, I, I'm so sorry. There is no proof, unless you believe the accounts of those who have reason to lie. Those who possess specific knowledge and insights is truly an unsolved mystery. Life was scripted like a Hollywood movie. Tim was not who he appeared to be. The maddening scarcity of evidence is limited to assumptions and speculation. Without a fingerprint, the hoax attempted to construct the profile of a killer. remain shrouded in mystery. Did he invent a tale of undercover intrigue and then stage a death? It is considered to be the best hope for a positive identification. It is at best a slow, frustrating process. It is easy to feel overwhelmed and frightened. The immediacy of television makes us feel as though every murder, every horror is happening right down the block. In reality, an elaborate ongoing hoax. Well, even hoaxes are usually based on something. And at the heart of each is a secret. A secret kept hidden by a con game, by a code. Perhaps someone, somewhere, can unlock these secrets. Perhaps that someone was watching. Perhaps it's you.
Everybody knows of anything. This is my mom, she's 47.